What is going on, everyone? Welcome to today's podcast. We've been listening and we have a fantastic interview today. You're going to want to buckle up, buckle up your seatbelts and get ready because this is going to be huge. We have Travis Scott here. <laughs> <laughs> the real Travis S. The real the one and only. The verified one on YouTube giving us the industry <laughs> secrets, bro. <laughs> I just want to say Travis Scott is not verified on YouTube, so I've officially taken over the title. Official. There you go. So now he deserves to follow. He's the real deal. He's the verified one. Definitely check him out. But Travis has been a longtime friend. You know, funny story. Uh, when we were going across the border, like we, uh, first of all, Kyle took us on a weird trip and we were going to visit Travis to film some YouTube videos. He took us this weird route and like we went to like a, a salt mine or something instead of the border and it was a whole mess and they got super freaked out and they wanted to like arrest us for being on the salt mine. And then we went across the border and they're like, where are you going? And we're like, oh, we're trying to make YouTube videos with our friend. And they're like, you've only known this guy for a year. He's not your friend. And we're like, well, we, <laughs> we'd like to think he's our friend, but it was so awesome going to Ohio, hanging out with him, you know, keeping up with what he's been doing. He's been in the food game, just like us. Uh, awesome guy to follow. Makes incredible high quality videos. He's pushed us uh, really make some good videos. We were looking at the, the old edits and really excited to have you on here, man. So good to be here, man. It's, uh, it's crazy to see how far we've, we've both come um, from, from a channel perspective, man. It feels like those were the golden days. What was that 20, 2017 when y'all came out to Ohio? Yeah, yeah. We were watching uh, the videos today for fun and those were great times. That was when we were like taking YouTube super seriously. And I just checked, you're at 131,000 subscribers and we're at like 119,000. So except oh. your engagement is 20 times better because we focus on, well, we focus on our podcast now. That's like, as our podcast listeners know, this is what we do like full time. Um, but it's cool to see you've stuck with it. Like you, your, your channel's amazing. Like you, you deliver, deliver amazing content. And that's why we're happy to have you here. You're not just a dude who eats a bunch of food and, you know, and, and works out here and there. Like, I feel like you can offer a lot of advice for our listeners. So we're so pumped to have you here, man. Yeah, man. I was super excited. You guys asked me on, um, just to be able to catch up if nothing else, and hopefully, uh, share some good insights for, for your listeners here. And hopefully they, they, they come out with uh, some value added information. A hundred percent. I don't doubt it. You know, and one thing we're really excited to have you speak on is Travis is in such a cool situation because he in particular uh, is not only someone who has, he's an entrepreneur, he's building a business, doing his stuff online, you know, kind of documenting his life, but he's also really in the corporate world and he's enjoyed the corporate world as well. And, you know, one thing we always thought was crazy that we love is he's in that 4am workout crew, which is pretty intense. You know, he's living both lives, balancing both lives, obviously, you know, having a great time documenting that. And I think it'll be a really, uh, he'll be able to give some really great insight as into balance in particular. Uh, anything to add there, Kyle? Yeah. So like my main question to start off, dude, is like, even if you just want to share with our audience, like what, like what you're all about and what kind of stuff you do um, in, in terms of just, yeah, just letting everyone know a bit of a background. Like we've already shared a few things, but even just, you know, what you'd like to share so they can get a good understanding. For sure. So, I mean, from a YouTube perspective, I've been on YouTube for like six years now, ever since I got out of grad school, uh, I started it as kind of like a fun thing to do to share my, my passion of fitness uh, with people. Um, and some people do see me on YouTube and think that it's like my full-time gig and I do social media, but um, really, I mean, my primary source of, of income and primary, uh, you know, occupation is actually in the, in corporate America. So I work for a large corporation um, and I'm, I'm a, I'm a sales rep. So I, uh, I annoy people all day trying to get them to buy my stuff. And that's what I do from, you know, seven to seven and on the nights and weekends, I'm, uh, I, I spend my time on YouTube making videos and the channel has really evolved. I mean, when, um, when I first started, it was just like almost like what you guys were doing workout tutorials, um, just making just strictly workout videos. And then it gravitated to a bunch of food focused videos where I was doing a bunch of food challenges and taking you guys to Chick-fil-A for the first time. And, you know, all of the, the fun food adventures. And that was fun for a while, but that wasn't like really capturing who I am and what I enjoy. So the food challenges, they would get a lot of views and they'd bring in a lot of people to my channel, but I didn't have like a passion for, for bad food. And it was almost like, you know, how is this fitness guy making food challenge videos every week? And it was something I was doing just to bring in an audience and it worked, 
but it, it didn't really align with my true values. So over the last few years, the channel has even evolved more. And of course you're going to see, you know, good food, but it's more now like become fitness family. Now that I'm engaged, living with my fiance, I have a dog. So it's almost turned into this hodgepodge of, um, you know, career advice mixed with fitness world and, and going out and adventuring and bringing the family into it. Um, so I guess like when I think about what I want to portray in my videos and what I want the audience to leave with is, Hey, this is just a normal guy working, you know, his, his typical job that a lot of people are out there working and fitness is still a huge passion. And my family, you know, is super important to me and how do we intertwine it all and, and find the balance that's really correct for us because I don't think it's, a right answer. I don't think that, you know, you should spend every person should spend 30% of their time working 40% of their time working out, you know, whatever split that you think is optimal. I think everyone will find their own balance. That's correct for their own life. Sorry. I yeah, mean myself that's... there. I want to make sure we're not talking over each other, but I, I love that too. Uh, sorry, Kyle, to chime in there, but I love in particular, like that your channel, you've always really kept it real to what you're doing. That's something we both have really enjoyed too. Like you've kind of documented the different phases of life. Like you said at first, it was like super, like most of us, you know, like fitness, tutorial, growth, you know, evolving that world and then kind of discovering flexible dieting, enjoying that. And then, you know, I remember too, when we were down, we were both like thinking like, what's the next big video we can make? Like, what's the, you know, the big yeah. thing, the fun thing. And, you know, I always like too that you kind of explored that. And I love that you've been able to pivot and, you know, really keep it real. And if you haven't checked out Travis yet, you know, he builds an amazing community of his followers, you know, it's a really fun place to be. And it's really cool that you're able to document and, you know, it's really interesting, too, because a lot of YouTubers now are fitness and uh, people and coaches are doing it full time. So there's not as many people that are also involved in that corporate world. So it's really cool that you can offer, uh, you know, value to both sides of that coin. Yeah, I think it's a, it's a really unique perspective that I don't think a lot of people will get on YouTube, which I think is cool. Uh, of course, like my audience isn't the biggest audience in the world, but I like that it's, you know, it's niche. And, uh, you know, the comment section is, is amazing because you're getting this feedback from individuals like, hey, man, these videos are actually having a big impact on my life. And I'm, I'm going through these day to day circumstances that you are and seeing you kind of work through it. And I think anyone that watches like vlog style videos are like, yeah, I mean, this isn't like earth shattering. I'm not going out and adventure, like, you know, in the Amazon and, you know, swinging across trees or doing anything crazy, but people like to watch just real life stuff. Yeah, I, I absolutely love that. And, you know, even like from actually knowing you like very personally as well, which is what's cool is like a lot of people don't see like when we used to do those vlogs, it's like it can be literally a week long thing. Like it, it, it is not easy. And for anyone who's listening, it's like, you know, uh, Travis has a full time job, like 40 plus hours, you know, family guy, uh, you know, fit, fitness advocate. And that's where we're going to talk about 4am workout crew after and like YouTuber and, and, and just, you know, uh, it just so much goes into that. So like my main question is, and I've seen your work ethic. I've seen what you've done. I see you editing these videos on the weekend and spending hours and taking us everywhere. And that was a great experience. But in terms of even just balance, like what kind of tips would you have for just someone who seems like they just can't like figure it out? I know you don't have it figured out. None of us do, but if you were to just, you know, give someone some tips, what would you say? I think the first thing I tell people is like, don't judge yourself because your idea of balance might not be the same as like your family or everyone else's. So like when I first started making YouTube videos, I was spending, I mean, I can't even imagine probably like 30 to 40 hours a week making YouTube videos in addition to a full-time job. And at that point in my life, that was the right balance for me because that's what brought me happiness. And I think that's really all we're looking for but it's going to change and it's going to evolve. So your balance is like every year or every so or every six months, you know, that is going to keep changing as far as what the right balance is. And I'm a big proponent on, um, or a big believer in that you will find time for the things that are important to you. Uh, you will find a way, whether it be waking up early or staying up later, becoming more efficient, which is a big uh, priority of mine. And even, um, you know, for me is like figuring out, okay, well, how do I multiply myself? So when I started YouTube, I was doing it all by myself. And, you know, the, one of the biggest things, um, the, the biggest changes I made was bringing on an editor, uh, last year. And 
that's like a big decision because you're making a big financial investment. But if you truly believe in something, I think, I'm, yeah, I think you just go all in. And so you just figure out ways, whether it be, uh, you know, figuring it out yourself, bringing on help or just finding things that in your day that aren't important. And I try to make sure that my days are full of things that actually matter and not filled of things that are maybe something you might feel obligated to do to make, you know, someone else happy, but maybe it doesn't bring you any enjoyment at all. Yeah, that you, you nailed that one right on the head. And even with editing, it's crazy. Kyle sent like we have a filmer and editor now too, which is so awesome. Like, and we're not even doing as intense videos at all. But Kyle sent him like a little screenshot of uh, Jeff Nippard's he posted his timeline to his story. And he's like, look at this. And Kyle's like, this makes my head hurt. You know, like, I'm sure we've all been there, you're editing for like 10 hours trying to make it perfect. You know, you're trying to find these overlays, these songs, and it's just brutal. And, and like you said, I guess knowing when to outsource is such a huge tip and like, you know, knowing when to get that help. And I think you nailed it there when you said, uh, you know, finding what's important to you and making sure to make it fit. And like, you know, if you, for, we get asked a lot from our, you know, some of our community here for the podcast, like, you know, if you're someone with a corporate job, a family, like when is the best time in your opinion to focus that fitness in there? How can you integrate it? You know, from your experience, how have you further, kind of done that like time wise like have you I know you've experimented a lot and like is there any tips you have as someone who's very in that corporate world whose position in the corporate world has changed like how have you been fluid with your position of always integrating fitness despite all these changes if that makes sense to add on to what Kyle said the, the number one tip I give to people is what you're building in fitness to your day as it's a non-negotiable so that mental switch is everything in my opinion like just like you know we had this scheduled for five o'clock to do this podcast just like my workouts every morning is scheduled for 4 a.m i'm not gonna miss it right it's in my schedule and i will you know i'm not going to let myself down and for no reason am i going to be able to skip it so regardless of what happens um obviously as long as it's not too extreme like i'm going to meet that appointment because i built it into my day and I really feel like once you flip that switch in your brain and you don't give yourself the option, like, Oh, maybe I could or couldn't work out is and once you make it like, Hey, this is happening regardless of anything else, whether I feel like it, whether I don't feel like it, or whether I have a lot of other things going on, like this is my time to get to improve my mind, my body. Um, and you, you just, you treat it like a job. That's what, that's the, that's the bottom line. I love it. It's uh, it's it's a non-negotiable, right? That's that's what we always we always talk about non-negotiables, and I think it's crazy because like you know even my, Josh and myself, once again, we we don't work you know that that nine to five or that you know seven to seven. So we luckily get to work out at like nine thirty a.m. And when I'm not with him, I'll usually do around seven a.m. But you know, for you, consistently getting up at what like three thirty, I guess almost. So Before? it's kind of been changing um, over the last year. Again, life will continue to change. So it was a little bit before four. Now it's that now that I'm lucky enough to have a home gym, uh, waking up, sleeping in until four, which is a luxury now. Um, and wow. not, you know, yeah. So sleeping until four and then uh, walking straight out to the garage and uh, starting the, starting the workouts, man. That's, that's awesome, man. So like, obviously the, just making it like, just not even giving yourself the option. Even for us, we talk about like snooze, button is not even an option that's that's what we talk about but aside from that did you have any other advice because like you know anyone who's listening a lot of our clients are are on the same schedule they they have to get up at four they have to get up at five and they're, they're doing this but anything else that you'd say has helped you maintain this for five years like you're you're not a guy who's just been doing 4am club for like two weeks so like you can really <laughs> offer some value here for me, I think it's like once I got over that mental struggle of, hey, this isn't optimal, which it's not, but I think the, figuring out what's optimal versus what's realistic. So going in, you know, being awake for 10 minutes, going into a freezing cold garage and working out half asleep, it's not going to provide the best progress. It's not, but it's going to provide a whole hell of a lot better progress than not doing it at all. So figuring out that or accepting that it could in an ideal world, right? I could go into the gym at 11 a.m. That's my preferred time. That's just my sweet spot. And that's what time I work out every weekend, every Saturday and every Sunday. I'm there at 11 a.m. It's my favorite time to work out. And it would be ideal. But what would I have to give up in order to be able to do that every day? And at this point in my life, I'm not willing to give up my primary career 
Um, and for me to be able to free up my evenings for the family is huge. So at, I think when I just came to peace with, hey, I'm not going to maximize every workout, but I'm still going to be able to make progress. I still don't need to use it as an excuse. Um, and once I kind of got over that, it's been, it's been kind, of, uh, kind of coasting from there, to be honest. Yeah, that's incredible. You know, I, so many people are so all or nothing with it, right? It's like, oh, if I can't get the most perfect results, I'm not going to do it at all. Or, you know, like, and it's so easy to have that mentality of if everything's not perfect, I'm not going to do it. But I love, like you said, finding what's best for the situation. And whether that's making a home gym or crafting out that time super early, like, you know, that's just such a big key. And like, you know, that's a big uh, mindset to have. And, you know, it's funny you bring up the home gym because we want to ask you about that too. Like, I know you had the home gym previously when we were there and you said you enjoyed it, but you still enjoyed going to the gym quite a lot. Obviously with COVID and everything going on, I guess that home gym is like the best investment ever. Like, you know, and it's funny, we made an episode a while back, like on our home gym is worth it. And we're like, oh, I don't know, like, it depends if you're super into it. And then we're kind of like, okay, hey, now maybe I'd really want home gym with how crazy it's been. Like, what's your opinion on home gyms? Like, is it like a must have? Or do you think it's kind of like, eh, it depends on the person? I definitely think it depends. For me, I have not been back in, in my state here in the United States and North, I live in North Carolina now, and we were actually the last state in the entire country to open up gyms. So um, it, it, when the whole quarantine thing happened, I realized like how big of a, of a deal going to a gym is to me, like losing that one of the biggest aspects of my life was brutal from a mental perspective. So no, I don't think home gyms are necessary at all. But for me, as someone who's not overly confident in going, I would prefer not to go to a gym uh, during COVID if I don't have to. Now, if I didn't have access to the gym, I, that's a risk I would take. But given that we, the timing aligned where the gyms weren't even open yet in North Carolina and we were moving into this house, uh, had a, a, a three-car garage, so perfect space for it. And but when I was in Ohio, you know, I had a home gym, but I also went to a gym and now my circumstances are much different. As I alluded to earlier, when your, you know, your idea of balance is always going to change. So now I would actually give up the luxury of going to a gym where I have more equipment. I have the camaraderie of other people, uh, have a warm climate or climate controlled, uh, area. Um, I would give that up to have more time, you know, with, uh, Megan and, and our dog Alfie in the mornings. Cause now that's like part of our family time. So it's just a trade-off that, that I'm willing to make. And I think it's well worth it. Awesome. Yeah. Super, uh, super well said. Yeah. We just want to see your feedback. Cause you know, once again, I, uh, <laughs> I wish I had a home gym, but we always get asked and like, even so what, like, what, what have you invested in, in terms of the home gym? Like, I, I know you have quite a few amazing squat rack and, and everything, but even just if you were to give some suggestions to someone who's like, you know, look into it, like what, what stuff have you found like important and valuable and, and worth it? Yeah, I don't, uh, man, you got, so you in Canada, you can't get rogue, I heard, um, or the, I guess it's really expensive yeah. to import. Yeah. And I know you've spent quite a bit, by the crazy. way, like, yeah, oh yeah. I've like 20,000 or something like, yeah, closer, right? it's been a very so, pretty penny for sure. Um, not worth it, right? But, oh, for me, yes. So, and everyone. Buy nicer, buy twice, right? That's what they say. <laughs> buy nicer, buy twice, right? Um, and and I'm a, a big proponent of that. I'm from Ohio, where Rogue Fitness is, you know, headquartered. So I'm a I'm a Rogue fanboy. Uh, it's unfortunate. I have a feeling you guys are going to be able to start getting in in Canada soon. I I just have this feeling they're going to start a, a distribution there. But I hope so. Um, from if you're looking at home gym, I'd say the number one staple in everyone's home gym should just be a squat squat rack, squat stand, um, even if you don't do squats, because you're going to be able to do everything from that, you know, that one main piece, whether it be barbell bench or overhead press, or, I mean, you can get really creative with tying, you know, bands around the post. So I think that that's like the only piece that's a non-negotiable is that in a barbell. In my opinion, I just think the versatility that that provides you is going to be greater than any other piece of equipment that you can buy. And I think for most people, like adjustable dumbbells are, are great. 
And I'm not a big fan of the adjustable dumbbells just because, you know, when you grow up in the gym and you get so used to having the every, it, whether it be, you know, you want to be able to superset or you just don't want to be able to have to mess around with changing up the weights. Um, but I think for most people, adjustable, adjustable dumbbells are just fine. I did opt for, you know, buying them, uh, you know, five to a hundreds, but I'm not a big fan of home gyms that, that like you're going out and buying like a bunch of pieces of equipment. I like to just stick to the basics. So dumbbells, barbell, squat rack, and that's for me. That's all I have, and a and a bike. I feel that that's I would do. I always tell people the same thing. Like a squat rack, you can just do like every compound ever. You can do chin ups. You can like it, it's just incredible how much you can actually do in that space. And you know, it's funny you mentioned adjustable dumbbells. I realized in my entire ten years of lifting, I don't think I've ever tried adjustable dumbbells ever which is have you ever used them Kyle I I have a lot of clients like I've kind of uh I've kind of handed them like when I used to tra uh, train some people at their houses and stuff but I'm just not a fan like they're good for how their price and 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 what you get and the lack of space but to me they're like pretty unreliable and they're kind of like they break and like even he had sure the bow flex while, when he dropped right? it and it just it just went to crap and like they're you know six five hundred bucks all in so I've never yeah. really used it but yeah, I've heard some things. And yeah. Then, yeah. Here's a good add on question for you. So when you go to the gym, you know, it's easy. You're in the car, you're bumping music, you're getting fired up, you're drinking the pre, like you said, how, how do you get yourself fired up to work out at home? Cause I know a lot of people have that barrier, right? It's almost too accessible. You know, it's like, it's right there. You think, Oh, I'll, I'll go do it. But then eventually like, oh, I could do it later. I'll put it on me. I'll do it. Like, wh how do you, I guess, obviously you make it a non-negotiable, but is there any tips you do to kind of, you know, flick that switch to say, okay, I'm up. It's time to, it's time to hustle. Man, I think that the biggest thing you can do is get on a proper program with uh, progressive overload built in. Uh, you have to have some objective measures in there because when you're going in by yourself, you're, it's, it's tough. So having numbers that you have to hit, uh, maybe you want to hire some some phenomenal coaches like Kyle and Josh to to write you some programming um, that's going to push you. Then that's what I need. If I try to go in and just oh I'm just going to wing it today, maybe do some bench, maybe do some triceps, you're not going to get the workout that you need to get in order to keep progressing. So you've got to have some direction and a purpose going in there. I think that's the that's the biggest um, downfall that most people fall into and i mean we all at least a lot of us love this right so there's going to be days where we're just going to go in and just lift hard because we love to lift but everyone's going to have those days where we're just like man i'm not feeling it today so having that written out for you to push you is a game changer uh, i couldn't agree more even just yeah we've had literally you know so much success with online coaching and 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 even just seeing like how much value just having literally a program to follow knowing your macros knowing all that stuff like our our clients love it i'm I'm really glad i uh, that you brought that up and even just having like goals attached to it, right not only having that program but having like what am what am i trying to do here and this kind of brings me to my question because you've done like some amazing powerlifting stuff in the past you've competed you've you've hit some crazy prs and enjoyed that um you know what are your thoughts on 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 competing and like you know what numbers have you hit just all about powerlifting you know before we transition to the food stuff i'm curious uh you know your take on it and and you know where you're at even not doing it right now it's probably a bit a bit hard not having those numbers to hit yeah i mean so when i was into the the powerlifting phase i think my best lifts were maybe like squat around 450 bench around 320 and deadlifts maybe around 520 or so um, and that's what I love most about powerlifting is that it was objective. I knew what I needed to do to get better and it wasn't as subjective and it wasn't as long of a process as the bodybuilding stuff, which, you know, you want to put a, an inch on your biceps, you're in for a year to two year haul to, to do that. So being able to get those micro wins week after week in the powerlifting arena is what really enticed me. And I'd probably still be doing it if I didn't, I herniated three discs in my back, uh, which ultimately was the demise of my powerlifting uh, hobby. It just wasn't ever the same. And it was, it was self-induced for sure, because I was going into the gym super early, not one warming up properly, just being an idiot. I was in my early twenties and I knew better, but you know, I just made, I made some mistakes. So now like I'm, I don't know that my back will ever be 
back to a hundred percent, but I'm lucky that I'm at the point now where I didn't need surgery. I can still lift a reasonable amount of weight, even if it's not powerlifting specific. Uh, but I still love the big three movements and still love, um, progressing those three main lifts and seeing as much progress as I can make. Yeah. Like that, that's huge. You know, I'm, I'm happy you're still able to hit those out and yeah, powerlifting's So I know I have a love hate too, because it's the best you go in there. It's, you know, you're just grinding at it. It feels so good. You know what you're hitting, but uh, you can definitely pay a price, right? Like, you know, the more I do it too, the more Kyle do, does it, the more we realize, you know, you got to warm up, you got to pay really good attention to those little intricacies. And, you know, it's funny hearing all your numbers, I'm thinking like, okay, you're giving Kyle a bit of a run for his money over there. You know, like it's, it's pretty close. You two, we might have to stick you two against each other. Kyle's going to have to come for those. Kyle's coming for that. Hey, I'm ready. Squat. <laughs> I'm ready. But and and that's the thing, man. It's like uh, you know, we're we're guys, like we have an ego, right? And that's yep. what's I mean, that's fun, right? You you know, I loved going to the gym back like, squatting more than that guy over there. Like where where, where are you at? You know, looking like, around when you load up the plates, making yeah, sure people are watching. Yeah, man. There's something like that that powerlifting like that swagger that it gives you that like yeah. you know you almost you don't look not, not like you're looking down on the bodybuilders but you're you were almost like yeah that doesn't even look good to me like yeah you're shredded but i'd rather be over here in the back section of the gym lifting all the weight yeah it's so fun you know i, I kind of have the mindset that like i feel like if you want to compete in something or like in fitness like powerlifting is a pretty great way to do it like even the meets are so positive like people are oh, super yeah. cool like how was yeah let's hear about your first meet like how did you find it man my first meet uh was with a, a dude that i met online named brandon campbell uh who got me into youtube and that was the first time i met him and now like this oh, was like gee. 2016 i think 2016 2017 and now like brandon and i are really good friends and we don't like when we talk we don't talk about youtube or powerlifting we're just you know talking like buddies talk um, but yeah, it was such a great experience. I had subscribers come out and the, the positive atmosphere was just, it was not what I expected. Everyone was rooting for each other. And I think if you're looking to get into any kind of fitness competition, I think that's going to be like the safest way to do it. Uh, you know, you start getting into the bodybuilding arena and, you know, you could really develop some pretty, um, some pretty scary habits with, you know, your eating disorder, any type of eating disorder or, um, any type of, uh, I guess, depending on which federation you go where drug use may or may not be more prevalent. So if I was like advising someone and they're like, Hey, I have this competitive itch, what should I get into? I would push them towards powerlifting. And as much as I don't agree with it and I don't get into it, but CrossFit, when you see like people get into CrossFit, man, like as long as you can stay safe, they are like gun ho about CrossFit. And it's, it's one of those things that I think as people are just looking to compete in something. It's so I love that, man. Job. Or you get, you got it. No, it's all good. Yeah. I was just going to say, I, I think it's just having that thing. Like we've, had, we have had so many clients, even Josh has had quite a few who have just been like, you know what? Let, let's go for powerlifting and uh you know even he can speak about that but it's just it's been cool because you have those numbers to push for you just strive for that and you just you give it your all of course safely but it's it's just so much fun i really encourage someone to just give it a shot and try it out you know while you know staying safe especially when you're younger i think powerlifting is prime for your younger years like your teens uh your late teens your 20 uh when you're in your 20s because you know that's when you're going to be putting on the most amount of that that newbie muscle and then if like bodybuilding entices you i am like my personal opinion is like wait till your late 20s or your 30s if if that's like you want to hop on a bodybuilding stage like go through a powerlifting uh a powerlifting phase where you're putting on all that muscle mass because i see what i what i think i see a lot in fitness too much and i think it's been very popularized over some like very popular influencers over the last five years is like people will try to get like really shredded before they have a decent amount of muscle on them so like yep. they're like shredding down and they're like well why don't i see abs and it's it's like well not it's not because your body fat isn't low enough it's because your muscular you know development isn't there so i almost feel like people jump into that lifestyle too quickly and i'd rather see people focus on putting on muscle as long as they're at a healthy body fat and then like shred down later yeah like i i agree everything you said there i agree with so much like yeah it's so like powerlifting is just there's nothing arbitrary about it. it's like did you do it or did you not you know type of thing like maybe depth or if you want to get into the nitty-gritty but yeah, yeah like we even both competed physique and it was funny i think the guy that won was the guy that was being uh coached by one of the judges 
too, which is like so funny, like the whole situation of it. And you know, I always tell people like people think they want to compete. And I'm like, listen, like, do you need the validation of going on stage, having people judge you for like you trying to look and do your best and be like kind of rated? Like if you love that thing, you know, power to you, but it's like, it's a little tougher, I think. And like you said, you know, building some, you can build some negative associations and in particular with women, you know, like some prep coaches in particular, like more of the old school ones, just like diet people down so, so low, almost to the point where like it's dangerous. And, you know, you see some weird, like, you know, binge eating behavior can come out of it and it can, it can be definitely really tough. And whereas pilot thing, I've noticed a lot of people will do one meeting. They'll say that was awesome. Like I'll call it there. Um, and it's, it's kind of a cool thing too. Like maybe we have a bias, but as someone who's done both, you know, like it's definitely something I've enjoyed a bit more. Yeah. Yeah. I never uh, got into, like, I was never even like a big fan of bodybuilding. Like I don't, I, I know the popular, like, you know, the Ronnie Coleman's of the world, but it was just never a sport that really spoke to me. And uh, at the end of the day, I, I love to eat too much. So I don't know that I, I don't know that I'm cut out for that. <laughs> yeah. And then last question before we get to eating, cause we're going to do some fun eating things. Cause we both been in that food challenge world. It's so <laughs> funny. So many people know me for food chat, like the things, and I'm like, it's not really my thing, but it got views, you know, but so right. one thing we always do, and we've made so many videos on it. I'm sure you have too, is like, we'll do like the seven things I wish I knew before I started lifting. I don't necessarily need seven things, but you know, as someone such as yourself, who's been lifting for a while now too, like if you could go back to OG Travis S walking into the gym, like, what do you wish you could, like, you would tell them, you'd say, whoa, you know, like, do this more, do less of this. Like, if you could redo some of that journey, what would you do differently? I would tell my younger self that doing bicep curls at the start of every workout every day is not going to grow my biceps the way I want it to. <laughs> That'd be, that would be the number one. Um, <laughs> I would also tell myself that you got to be patient. This stuff takes a long time. I mean, people have dedicated their lives to it. So when you see, you know, these natural lifters that look phenomenal, typically, you know, they're older, right? They're 28, 29, 30 years old, because it, unless you're just a genetic freak, like it takes a long time to put on, to put on muscle. So give yourself time, make it a lifestyle. Um, and really I go back to get on a proper program whatever that means for your goals, whether it be a proper bodybuilding program or a proper powerlifting program, and don't just try to wing it. That's the number one mistake, I think, is when people just think that they're going to go into the gym and, and just figure it out when they get there. You're, 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 just ex you're going to make progress, don't get me wrong, but you're extending that period even longer than necessary in terms of you know, making as much progress as possible. I love that. I actually think it's amazing because we always tell people like, you know, who inquire for coaching, like we, we hear every single day and I'm like, you will literally save years of your life when you follow our routine, when we help you with your nutrition, when we help you with these lifestyle changes, they're like, will I, like, they're wondering, will I really? I'm like, yes. Like I've been there. Like I've spun my wheels for so long. You, you've probably done the same. Like we've all been in that situation where we could have done better. And I look back, I'm like, man, if only I got help. So I'm really glad that you said that. And I had one last um, workout related thing that I really want to know, because you said that you herniated your disc. Um, Josh has had, you know, um, hernia surgery this past year, I've fallen off my motorcycle and, you know, hurt my knee and stuff like we've all a lot of listeners can probably say they've had that, that one injury that one that one thing like how do you how do you bounce back from something like that? Because you could have just said, screw it. I'm not meant to do this. I'm, I'm, I'm never going to work out again. Who cares? So like, how do you mentally just get back into that after a, her a couple herniated discs? Not one, you said three, right? Yeah, three. Um, slowly. It was, wow. I, th I think the first thing I will say is the biggest thing you can do at that point is stop pushing it. Cause that was why I made it so bad. I think it probably started with one and then I tried to push through it. Right. I was, I was being tough. Right. Um, and it was, it wasn't the right decision. So the first thing you need to do is take a step back and, you know, get some help. And, um, after like six months or so is when I could finally start to do, push some weight, like get on a machine and do like a chest press or something. And, it will take longer to get back into it mentally than it will physically. And I think I'm still there. Like there's still this mental block where there's, there's points I would push myself to before that injury that I am really reluctant to do nowadays. And I definitely leave some on the table when it comes to progress. And so, you know, as a lifter, you're always flirting with that line of push yourself as hard as you, as hard as you possibly can, dot, 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 without getting hurt. 
so that's like that gray area that we're all trying to stay within. So give yourself enough time and don't feel like you need to day one, get back to your previous lifts because you're going to start not at zero because it'll come back faster, but start with the bar, put 10 pounds on the next week, put 25s on the next week and, and kind of go from there. Uh, because the last thing you're going to want to do is, is re-injure yourself. And the better you start to feel the more confidence that you're going to get uh, from a mental perspective. Those are painful too, right? I, I've heard those are some next level pain. I wouldn't wish that from, I've heard like when you do it, you're, it's just like, Oh <laughs> yeah. I mean, there were days where I was like late for work. Cause I couldn't put my socks on and I would have to call my boss. Like, this is embarrassing, but I can't even get out of bed. So it was not, it was not my uh, finest moments. And mentally it was tough because, you know, you just took away something that I love to do, but I, I fell in love with walking uh, during that time. And I still love it. So even to this day, I love walking because that's a, you know, that's all I could do. So I would go to the gym just because I love to be at the gym and I would get on the treadmill and just walk for an hour and a half. Yeah. And even keeping that habit, right? Like, yeah, I had a hernia surgery different than a herniated disc. I know some people mix them up, but, and it was the same thing for me. Like you come back and they don't really want you lifting because you're bracing through your abdomen. And I would just walk like Kyle would work out and I would walk for like an hour. Like I started at like one mile per hour and I just would work my way up over time. Uh, and you know, like, like you said, walking is just such like a hidden weapon too. like, when you have to back off too, you can take partake in that you can still supply glycogen to your muscles, you can maintain that habit, you can stay active, which is awesome. And I love that, you know, you found your way back to lifting, I'm sure for a little while there too, like, from doing that from lifting, it could be tempting to be like, Oh, lifting did this to me, I don't want to lift heavy again, or, you know, and it's good that you kind of have that attitude of easing back into it slowly, intelligently, probably doubling down on warm ups, like, how have you uh, warmed up? differently to kind of safeguard your back you guys talk about non-negotiables and that's exactly what warming up became after that um, now it's like no matter how rushed I am no matter what's going on I warm up probably 30 minutes of just stretching and not um, not, not necessarily just stretching but biking um, dynamic warm-ups uh, before every workout so that's like 30 minutes would be my minimum if I'm doing squats it might be you know 40 minutes so that's really been a big learning portion for me and there's this book by a uh, Jocko called extreme ownership and I think that's one of the things that uh, really kind of kept me at peace with the injury is like I'm the reason that I got injured. It wasn't because of the barbell. It wasn't because I, of a squat. It was because I wasn't prepping my body uh, to do the list that I was doing. So that's, you know, again, a lot of things in lifting can be applied to every area of your life, which is, or I love those parallels. Uh, so once I started thinking of it in that manner, it's like, I've got no one to be mad at but myself. I know Kyle's thinking of a quote right now. I, I don't even know, man. That's just like, it's just so well said. I, I just, uh, I, I couldn't agree more. It's, it's yeah. Well, even I'm, I'm kind of like Kyle, speechless here. Yeah. You nailed it. But me and Kyle always say, cause stuff happens all the time. You know, Kyle always says there's always going to be nonsense, like something bad happens. But one adage we've really liked is things don't happen to you. They happen because of you. I thought Kyle was going to spit that one out. Right well, I away. was thinking that, but I was like, okay, I'll, I'll leave it here. Like he, he hit the nail. Yeah. He did kill like, it though. But we, it, we do so say that. Yeah. And like, even I, I love you, like you have such a central theme of like, what's most important, you know, and even how you said it, no matter what, no matter how rushed you are, you're doing that important thing. And like, by keeping that important thing first, I think that's one big metric that's really made you successful. Like if there's one thing to take away, it's like knowing what's important and doubling down on what's important and kind of letting everything else fall into place around that. Like, would you agree with that kind of? Yeah, for sure. It's like you're prioritizing what's most important to you. And by default, like other good things will fall into that. Like by default of me stretching before my workouts, I'm going to become more flexible. I'm going to be uh, more, you know, I'm going to be in a better position for all my workouts and not to hurt myself moving forward. So I just feel like if you're prioritizing the most important things, then other good things are going to happen. Um, and you don't really need to worry about every little piece Focus on, you know, the, the main things and uh, don't get caught up in the minutia. Awesome, man. Yeah. I mean, we'll leave that there for the, for the training side of things. I'm really pumped about this because, uh, you know, we have Travis, uh, Travis S here, who is the food eating champion. <laughs> um, let's hear the craziest thing, man. Like you, you go to your YouTube channel, of course, like 
it's funny because people think that's that's all you do. They they see that you've done food challenges. They're like, does this guy even eat healthy? Does he even eat anything? Like, let's talk a little bit about that. First of all, what's the craziest thing you've done food challenge wise? Because mm. yeah, you've done some crazy things. The twenty thousand calorie challenge was terrible. That was oh man. That was miserable. Um, the gold, Do you guys have Golden Corral or know what that is? I don't know what that is now. It, it's like this buffet with like very um, low quality food, but it's like $6. So you can imagine like what an all you can eat buffet. Um, that was like, oh, that was not fun. Um, man, there were some really painful ones. Um, the IHOP pancake eating challenge, unlimited pancakes. Wow. Yeah, man, there were some, some really, some really painful, painful videos that I was making for entertainment of YouTube that, uh, I was paying the price for, for sure. So what are your thoughts on them? Like we've done five, we've done 15,000 calorie challenge. We've done 10,000 calorie three times. I've done 10,000 calorie ice cream and we did 10,000 Canadian and like we've done them. They got views. Like they were okay we spend lots of time and money and everything on it but like what are your thoughts on them i mean someone who's done so many like just your honest thoughts so like when i think of a business i think of like the business expenses that you have and when i think of like those food challenges for me like for my business those were like marketing expenses so those i was making those videos to try to get viewership on videos that actually meant something to me and it didn't always, I mean, it worked in that, like I would get a lot of subscribers and those videos would get a lot of views, but a lot of times they were just such different audiences that I was looking for. Cause they came here for food challenges. And then I'm trying to make a video about how to balance your work and your family life. And the person that's wanting to watch a food challenge is like, what, the, what is this crap? Like I, I I'm not interested. So it did work and it didn't work. If, if that makes, if that makes any sense. So um, I don't think there's anything wrong with it inherently, but I think you just have to be mindful that like I would get messages from people saying like DMing me I'm like, Hey, I'm going to try the 10,000 calorie challenge today. What do you, or this weekend? What do you think? I'm like, I'm thinking, why would you do that? Like I'm doing this as an entertainer. Right. Um, and so some people like that are watching you, you have to remember that don't have healthy relationships with food as is. So there's uh, there's, you know, you got to have some caution in there. But, um, you know, we both done them and I think everyone that does food challenges does them for the same reasons. So it's, um, it's one of those things. It's, uh, I wouldn't say necessary evil, but it is a good way to get your name out there. Yeah, it was the same with us, you know, and like you said, it's tough too, because you're drawing in people for one thing. And like, we had like a lot of our form videos blew up, you know, our eating videos would blow up and then we'd you know, have like kind of the documentation, the blog stuff. And, you know, we kind of struggled to really centralize what we wanted to do. And eventually we're like, yeah, we're done with these food challenges. Like, you know, you poor Kyle, he puked so many times doing them. Like it was just a lot, you know, and it's fun to do once. It's like, can you do that 10,000? Because everyone ever is like, I could easily eat 10,000 calories in a day. No and you're like, okay, we'll see, you know, like it's so much harder than you would think. And I'm looking here. I was curious to see like what my most popular videos are. And I, that brings into another trend that I'd got into like two years ago where I would do like a celebrity diet. So then I, I tried so-and-so's diet. And so like the one that blew up was the rock. I tried the rocks diet. And then this like started a trend all throughout fitness YouTube because that video took off and then everyone saw those numbers. And now it's like a trend on YouTube where I tried, you know, you name their diet. Um, so that was like another trend I got into for views. And that was my most viewed video at 1.8 million. And I'm just looking through the line here, like fast food challenge. And then my third most viewed video is a video called lifestyle of a loner. And those are like the types of videos I was actually passionate about was like making thought provoking short documentaries, films, well edited productions. And unfortunately, like those were not the videos that were gathering the most views. And I look at like these top, pretty much my top 20 videos are all food related some way or somehow besides that one. So now this is a fun question because I couldn't answer it. So if you can't answer it, that's fine. But if someone, if you said, Hey, I, I'm a YouTuber checking my YouTube and they said, okay, uh, what video should I watch? Like what's one Ooh. video they should watch? See, I couldn't answer. Maybe Kyle can. I'll, same question for you, Kyle. Like what's one that's video? Such a good question. Um, a tough one. If it's like, yeah, I'm just meeting some from someone for the first time and I'm like, Hey, this would be a good video to get to know me. 
I would probably say check out um, like day in the life of a sales rep because that's like my day to day and that will take them through everything. Um, you know, the morning routine, the spending time with the family, going out and doing my real job, day of eating, uh, like a normal day of eating and how, you know, I think that would give them like, that would really do a good job of like who I am as a person, uh, unlike the, the eating videos. Amazing. Well, we'll link that. Absolutely. So everyone can check that out. As for us, I, I don't even know, like, you know, we have a video with 2 million views, but that's like, shoulder impingement people love it and it's just like i'm not like crazy passionate for not it like us we we're not like the impingement reminder. boys right yeah like we're not known as that but we don't have that specific one like we have like 400 videos so i guarantee if i look back i could find the best edit the best content so maybe maybe i'll find the best one and, and link that below so people can get to know us too but I thought you were question. gonna say that uh that vlog with travis s i thought that was gonna be you know what though those were amazing <laughs> i will i just- watched them today can we dive into this one, this one quick story where Kyle goes out and buys a DJI drone for this trip <laughs> and has the, I keep those drone clips on my desktop because they're so good of downtown Cincinnati, Ohio. I mean, I think it was your first time flying it, wasn't, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, I, I and these shots though, are incredible, <laughs> dude. It was sketchy as hell, like the way that he's like taking it off, and sure, surely it wasn't like legal fly space. Oh yeah, we flew it over the stadium too, right? The Bengals it, stadium. That's definitely super the, illegal. The Bengals <laughs> stadium, and you would think that he was like a like a drone pilot. I mean, these shots are incredible <laughs> to this day. Those are my favorite drone shots. Oh man, yeah. That it's was, funny you uh, mentioned that too, because like we, I was saying today, like how much I actually like. Travis took us to Cincinnati. Like I know you live more so in Ohio, but did you live in Cincinnati for a while too? Well, we were. So I was technically in like the suburbs of Cincinnati. So where you guys came to stay was a house that I lived in that was probably like thirty-five minutes outside of the actual city. Okay, yeah, but like Cincinnati, like to this day, I love that city, like where you showed it. I was saying to Kyle, like if you dropped me off there today, I feel like I'd kind of have a good understanding of it because it's so cool how there's like that bridge to Kentucky, right? Yep. Um, and like, it's just, it was such a good time. And we've been since back there on our way to Kentucky, we stopped in and like, we hit some of the same spots and like, you know, it's a really cool city in particular. Like it's, it's something that's always stuck with me. Like I, I've always liked it and I'm definitely uh, hoping to go back uh, down again. Maybe a uh, Kyle whip out a drone, who knows? <laughs> I think that the best thing about YouTube, at least from the vlog perspective is having that that stuff to look back on like the fact that we can go back from three or four years ago and like watch ourselves hanging out so cool and i think if like youtube like if it died tomorrow and it just went away but they archived the videos it would all be worth it because i can go back and watch the last six years of my life since i was uh you know right out of grad school till now which obviously things are so much different it's just cool to be able to go back and, and kind of watch watch that transpire so many memories too, eh? Like looking at your goals, looking at like the way you spoke in the cer- certain time, what you wore, like, it's really crazy to capture so much of it. And like the funny memories and like, especially vlogging, like that is one huge, huge perk of it. Like it's a lot of work, but it really is cool to have all these like little micro stories. Yeah. Sometimes I think I vlog like selfishly, like maybe no one else cares, but I'll pick up the camera and like, I'll start recording and edit it together and I'll put it on YouTube and I mean, maybe I, I don't really like think about it at the time, but I'll go back and watch it two years later. I'm like, man, I'm so glad I, I picked up the camera that day. I was actually thinking the same thing today. Cause when I watch the videos of you and I, like, it's going to be cool. Once again, there's gonna be a lot of people who probably tune into this, who, you know, we're so happy to see our collab back. Like, I don't know, three or four years ago. I feel like, like so many people, even if they don't follow us now, they're going to see and, and just be like, yo, like I need to listen. But I was looking back, I'm like, man, like I love our lot pull down videos. Our most viral ones are cool, but, I, and it helps people. But even the ones with 5,000 views or 3000 views and just looking back, I'm like, man, I'm so pumped to share all these fun videos that we created between me, you and Josh. And like, it was just such a fun experience because we can look back at our entire trip and I forgot everything. And now I'm like, wow, that was such a great time. Like so many cool edits, the drone oh, stuff, yeah. you forget about it, right? 
Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, having that to, to, to always look back on. And I always tell people, even like in 30 years, like how cool is that going to be? Like who knows where we'll be in life, but I guarantee you I'll be like watching those videos. I'm like, damn, I remember when those guys from Canada came to my house. I had never even met them in real life. They stayed the whole weekend. We had a blast. Um, we talked about like, uh, dude, I remember like we had, there's like a joke in there about like you guys coming to the wedding. I mean, all, all types of stuff. Like we, we went shopping. I mean, just crazy stuff. It's, uh, you know, you, you'll never, uh, you'll never forget that stuff. That was some good times, man. Yeah, we really appreciate that. You just let us in, you know, we, we did the big drive over in Kyle's old Civic and like you were prepped too, which was sick. Like, cause we were in such a food mindset, like in Canada, we didn't have Halo top. Uh, we didn't have Chick-fil-A and like, she was just taking us everywhere. We're like me and Kyle are just pumped eating all this food, just freaking training. Like it's a good life, you know, that life of eating, training, chilling. Like, uh, I think we did a Chick-fil-A like menu there. challenge or something. I'm pretty sure yeah we did we got a bunch of stuff and it's funny we've since done that because they opened one up in toronto even tomorrow we're gonna order chick-fil-a for fun i'm lucky i can finally door dash it here there's like two in canada uh, but i got one close to me so that's a, yeah, they, a they just came out with plug. the spicy grilled chicken i don't know if okay. they did in canada but probably not we, we get everything like six years later. <laughs> <laughs> awesome so, I mean, like, I guess I just had one more food related one because, uh, you know, we, we just went off in a little tangent of good memories, which hopefully people enjoy. They can watch the videos and, and get some good fun. But, you know, one last food related thing, um, because, you know, people think, yeah, you eat 10,000 calories and, and do all this crazy stuff. And the sad reality is there's a lot of people out there who will have like the 5,000 calorie days and just binges and everything. But like, what would be your best strategy for just getting back on track that next day to, to get back into it and to just re reset after like a big heavy weekend or day of eating like what kind of tips and strategies do you use i always tell people to like don't do anything drastic um you know on either end don't be like have the all or nothing nothing mentality where you're like you know i already screwed up yesterday so i'm just gonna go all out today and also don't be like well i screwed up so bad that i'm just gonna not eat anything I'm a big proponent of uh, just listening to what your body is telling you to do. Cause there's some t days like on, I usually have like, I'm free. I have like on Sundays is when I'm like a little bit looser with my diet. And if I, whatever I'm craving, like on Sunday, we'll just eat it then. And some days I'll eat 2000 calories or 3000 and some days I'll eat 5000. And then that next day I'm like, well, if I'm not hungry, I'm not going to eat. And if I am hungry, then I'll eat. And I don't, you know, either way, I'm not like beating myself up, up about it, but I'm really just trying to get back into the routine, like knowing, Hey, at the end of the day, like my fitness goals are going to be, um, you know, they could be, you can make or break them based off of, you know, my decisions here. So I want to make the best possible decisions in order to just get my performance back in order. And if you eat too much, you're going to be sluggish. And if you don't eat enough, you're not going to be fueled. So uh, I'm just keeping that in the back of my mind. That's awesome. Yeah, that's such a great way of looking at it. And, you know, even with how jam packed your day and your life is right now, like, what are your go to meals? Like, is there staple meals you particularly love to really enjoy? Like, you know, for me, I, I every day it's oatmeal, you know, you, me and Kyle both utilize a lot of smoothies, like, for someone who's busy, like, what are your kind of just favorite things to eat that you find are like really nutritionally dense, have you feeling great, all that good stuff. I'm a big smoothie guy too. So uh, during the mornings, depending on how rushed I am, I'll either do a smoothie, a protein smoothie or a protein bar. And I don't eat too much during the mornings because I find if I have a big breakfast and I'm just like really lethargic. So I try to, my, usually like my ideal calorie, calorie range for like a breakfast is like 200 to 450. Um, just, just based off of the way that, um, you know, I feel. And then during lunch, it's my lunch has been the same since quarantine started, where it's like a kale salad, we'll have like a bed of kale, beef, corn, just try to get some vegetables, some protein, and then some like potatoes. Um, I'm very like, I know, like right now, it seems like this whole if it fits your macro recipe things is like coming back it goes in waves like back in the day it was really popular and then it went away and now people are coming out with like all these cookbooks and making all these like healthy pizza and you know all these crazy recipes but i'm not really into that um i'm more of like i want chicken 
potatoes, uh, vegetables, and that's where I thrive. And then, you know, for dinner, we'll always have something together, uh, whether like last night was like salmon and, and rice, tonight will be chicken thighs and potatoes. So for me, it's like keeping it simple. And then because I work out so early, I don't have enough time for a pre-workout meal. So I'll actually carve up at night and I'll have like a big bowl of oatmeal um, at night or something that's pretty carb heavy to try to hold me over through, through the morning. Yeah. It's a smart way to do it. You know, like some people will say, yeah, we get so early. What should I do? And it's like, why not use that window at night? You know, kind of let your body run through it. Like you want to make sure you have something. And I, I absolutely agree with what you said. You know, I, I think Kyle the same, you know, you get super into those, you know, macro friendly, this macro friendly, that, but I feel like the longer you do it, you kind of just default to, you know, the basics of good eating, you know, the things you like keeping it simple, you know, like they say, right, kiss, keep it simple, stupid, like at the end of the day, a lot of these alternatives are good, but it's kind of like, eh, I'd rather just have the real thing kind of work it in or, you know, stick to my fundamentals. And I, I'm the same way with that for sure. Yeah. And not forgetting the importance of, of micronutrients as well. I think that's what gets lost all too often is like fruits and vegetables are really important. I um, mean, if you have a micronutrient deficiency, it's going to show in a lot of different ways. Um, and at the end of the day, like I'm not going to be a professional bodybuilder, but I, I hope to be a very healthy man, you know? So I'm old, man. I'm 30, 31. 30, I'm 31. Yeah. 30, I'm 31. Yeah. I was like, am I 31 or 32? But look at all this gray hair, man. I mean, I'm getting old, so I got to take care say, of myself. The flow's looking good, man. The hair's looking <laughs> luscious over here. <laughs> Shoot. Uh, I've got a bit of a selfish, selfish question because I, I'm wondering this, uh, you know, and I'm sure this can help other people out as well, but um, we know based off of your sponsors, based off of, you know, being, I'm not sure necessarily, um, who you're with right now, but from having a successful YouTube channel, let's get real. You can do that. You can do that full time. Now, my question is as a successful entrepreneur, like why do you decide to stay in sales? What makes you just not want to like pack up and just run with YouTube, run with all that stuff? Like what's kept you like going with your whole corporate and sales and everything? Like, I'm just curious. Yeah, that's a good question. And I think, um, you know, I, I always have to live with the question in the back of my head. Like what if I went all in on social media? And for me, it's just because I've not, I, I've not been that passionate about it. Like I don't have a business outside of, you know, just making YouTube videos. Like I'm, I don't do coaching. I don't have a clothing line. Um, it's not ever been that. It's really just been, I have, I like to make YouTube videos and I'm glad that people enjoy them but I've always been more passionate about chasing this career, regardless of what that career has been, whether, you know, when I was in accounting, I was really passionate about that. And then I moved to sales. I became really passionate about that. And I, I just like that lifestyle. And I think if I ever got to the point where I was like, my heart's telling me to do social media full time, I for sure would. Um, and yeah, because I mean, I'm at the point now where, you know, I have sponsors and I can monetize a lot of things that I'm doing and, you know, I could, sustain a lifestyle that was comfortable uh doing that especially if i you know dedicated everything to it i can only imagine you know what it could could turn into um and again it's just comes back to kind of what my heart tells me and um for now it's been you know just nice to have it on the side and if it ever changes over then i'll i'll, I'll just listen to it to kind of what my gut says I love that. Like, I think that's an important message. You know, I was discussing this with someone like everything like nowadays more than ever, you know, everyone wants to be self-employed to work for themselves to do all these great things. And like, you know, as someone who does it, I love it too. But I think there's also a lot of value in saying, you know, this is my passion. I want to leave it as that. Like it's a fun project, you know, like it's your way of being creative, of expressing yourself, of documenting of all these great things. Like to, there's nothing wrong with like, you know, enjoying working in a company or working for someone else. Like, it just seems like it's funny because before it was so weird to like work by yourself to be self employed, like it was an odd thing. But now as it's being like praised more and more, like, I think it's really cool that you're able to say like, I love my job. I love what I do. And I love doing this as well, which is really cool. Like, it's really fun to have that project, that thing to enjoy and, you know, to kind of follow your heart with that. So like, I respect that you just stuck with that. And like, not kind of fell into the pressure to just say, Oh, I need to, to build this thing to cultivate it and to grow it like as big as it could ever be, you know? And I think it's all about taking calculated risks too. I mean, I mean, we've seen a lot of changes over YouTube, you know, in the last five years since we've, we've been making videos. So 
um, because I don't have a business that's like the backbone of that channel. And it really is the, the actual YouTube videos themselves. It's like, well, what about the next five years? Like, is that a really good idea for me to leave a, a job that, you know, provides my family with a very comfortable way of living with that much uncertainty? I mean, for me, I would have to be like, okay, if I'm going to do this, then it can't just be making YouTube videos. It has to be, how do we olive branch this this out to create a business that does this? And that's always an op- and, uh, uh, that's always a um, option, but it's just one of those things where I think sometimes people see influencers like going full time and like, that's what I want to do. But they don't realize that it's not just like taking selfies and posting them on Instagram and, you know, running around all day with your friends. Like there's some calculated, uh, uh, you know, activity to all this most of the time. I'm sure there's somebody out there that just takes a picture and becomes, uh, you know, that's a lot more attractive than all of us and becomes a millionaire because, you know, because of that. But uh, for most people, I think that there actually is, a, you know, a, a backbone to to what they're doing. Love it. And uh, even man, sometimes I feel like when you end up making it your full time job, it's it's it, it can be not as much fun. Like I, I, I know <sighs> so many people you kind of just start like that's all it is. And then you you have less fun. Whereas for you, there's no pressure. You enjoy it. Like YouTube for us is not nearly as much fun as it became a full time thing. I'm, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. And it does like the pressure is like so much less for me. Uh, and that's one of the benefits I'm able to provide my audience on social media is like such an, a candid, like reality of what I'm thinking and feeling because if tomorrow, you know, YouTube kicks me off the platform and my sponsors leave, I'm perfectly fine. Um, you know, my life doesn't really change that much. And I think there's a lot of advantages to, to, to that. Um, there's certain things I can do and say that most people can't. Um, because, you know, they rely on certain aspects of their social platform to provide their living. Um, and just like there's certain things that I can't do and say at my professional career. So, um, I think there's advantages and disadvantages. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, we've got, uh, two last questions. Um, I'm, I'm sure maybe Josh has more, but, um, I wanted to get a little bit personal here. I know we've had a lot of fun. I know, you know, we've had some laughs and caught up on a lot of stuff. And, you know, you did us a favor by coming on here and, and providing all this audience. Now, I wanted to give you this platform to share a very important message with our listeners. Um, I know your mother was an amazing woman and you had lost her to cancer and a lot of stuff. Now, if you could share just everything she's taught you and just give this opportunity we want to give you this opportunity to share with all of our listeners we get many thousands of people because we 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 see all your posts you you highly respect her and we absolutely love that and if there's a few lessons that you want to share with the, our, our listeners i think that'd be awesome yeah yeah man i mean my mom and i were inseparable so we were like best friends to the core and i was uh, lucky enough that i was her caregiver when i was in college so i got to go home every weekend and care for her because she was really sick and she couldn't do you know the simple things that just around the house so that's kind of like i'm always trying to find the good in every situation and I've always told people, like, if I don't receive anything else for the rest of my life, then I'm fine because I feel like the greatest gift I was given was being able to care for her during those times. And like the fact that I was only 30 minutes away at college and I could come home every weekend and we had that time to spend out, you know, the last four years of her life. And she is, um, you know, she's the reason that I am the way that I am, that I'm so disciplined and the way that, you know, I view the world. And she, like when I, she was still living when I was um, eight. 18 and the first tattoo I ever got was hard work pays off and her initials because that's what she always told me and she was like Travis I don't care what your results are I don't care if you get the best grades the worst grades if you try your best then I'm good with it and I think I've taken that with me in every aspect of my life is like I'm not gonna be you know I'm not smart enough to be a doctor and I'm not the biggest and the strongest but I've seen some phenomenal results over my life of just being putting an effort and that's where I separate myself from most people I think is just the amount of effort that I'm willing to put in and that's something that she taught me you know she came from very very humble beginnings and um you know that's just one of the things that she's instilled in me and to this day like i live in a way that was that i still think to this day is um you know what would she think about this decision and i'm it's always in the back of my mind so like every decision i'm like how do i how would i make my mom proud 
And it's like, once you start answering those questions, honestly, the rest just kind of falls in place. And I look at my life now at 31 years old and I look around here and I'm like, wow, she would be so proud of what this life that I've put together uh, with an amazing woman and an amazing home. And, you know, we live comfortably, you know, not much different than the lifestyle that I lived when I was a child. So those are the things that like I look back on and what I'm most proud of and know, you know, now that my mom and then my, my father had passed two years ago now. So now like you've seen these circumstances where you're, you, you learn really quick, like things are not guaranteed. So you, you learn not to take those things for granted and you understand that things can go wrong very quickly. Um, But when you live like, you know, on your own terms, because you don't know how long you're going to be here. So you don't need to impress everyone else. You just need to impress yourself. And I think when, when you, uh, when you take your life into your own hands and uh, you make the right choices, it's, it's pretty amazing. Um, I, I probably just went on a long tangent there, but I could talk about uh, my mom for forever, man. She's a uh, keeper right here with me. I keep my uh, guardian angel right here all the time. Uh, so constant reminders all the time. Oh, that, that was awesome. Thank you so much for sharing that. That, you know, that was a beautiful message that got me uh, fired up for sharing sentimental. Like, you know, that I, I have nothing to add in anything. Kyle. God, I'm, I'm, I'm almost tearing up, dude. Like, frick, that was, uh, that was good. Yeah, I appreciate it. I think, um, you know, anytime you you go through something that's life changing, uh, it could go one of two ways. You could go downwards in a dark spiral. And of course you'll have those moments, especially, you know, initially. Um, but you could also, um, you could also choose for it to be a, a propeller or a, something that pushes you forward. And I, I will always try to find the good in situations. And the fact that we had, I've, I've told this to people before. I was like, I lost my best friend when I was 24, my, when my mom passed. But the fact that I had that for 24 years, that kind of relationship that some people will never experience, like my heart breaks for people that lose their parents when they're two years old and they never got that bond. And like, I think about that kind of stuff and I just like, it, it, it eats at me. So I'm always reminding myself how lucky I've been in this life. And uh, again, I, I know that she's watching over me and, and proud of the decisions that I'm making. And it's made me a better person uh, without question. Man. Yeah. You're like, just, I think that's why we, we clicked so well when we first got to know you. It's just like, you can, everyone who's listening to this, like you're just one of the most like genuine, nicest, like solid dudes out there. And uh, yeah, we just really appreciate you have uh, be, you know, taking the time to be here and we wanted to, you know, um, just catch up above all, which we're really happy about. And, uh, even like one, one quote, like we love talking about quotes. What's like, you know, one of your most favorite quotes, something, I know you've got some tattoos with quotes. I know you got some cool stuff going on. What's one thing that just, it it will always sit with you quote wise, man. Yeah. I guess it's not necessarily a quote, but the, the hard work pays off. Uh, that's big for me. Uh, one of the, and I, I try to stay away from cliches uh, because sometimes I'm like, oh, it's so corny. But one of the quotes that always pops up in my day to day life is whether you think you can or you can't, you're right. Like, I don't know why that always just hits home with me because like the things you can manifest or, you know, I've seen it firsthand. So um, even though it is a bit corny and cheesy, that's one that I think is it, it, seriously, it holds true. I love both those. And I, yeah, when Kyle said that, I was thinking the hard work pays off tattoo because I love that. Like it's, it's such a simple, but such a strong message. And even how you said your mother, like, you know, no matter what, as long as you put your full effort, like, and that's it. Same with fitness, you know, like we always say a lot of people are scared to fail or to jump into it. Or, and it's like, if you get in there and you make an effort to be fitter, healthier, happier, which is the whole premise of this podcast, like you're going to make steps, you know, you might not necessarily like achieve that goal in a day, but you know, you'll work closer and closer and you'll feel great all throughout that process. So uh, you you spat fire here. This was a freaking amazing episode. This is our longest episode, which is super exciting. You know, I think we could, we could keep going probably for six hours. Uh, You know, hopefully hopefully everyone likes it. I could keep going. Yeah. Yeah, Let's do a part two. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Maybe that means I get another invite back. Yeah, right? exactly. If everyone loves it, like let's get a part two. Um, definitely be sure to blow up Travis on social. Uh, anything you want to shout out, like any specific place you want people to head. Uh, if you want to check me out on YouTube, uh, Travis S or uh, youtube.com slash business and fitness. 
that's where I spend most of my time. Um, uh, on Instagram, it's more my day to day. If you like uh, pictures of cute puppies, uh, but YouTube is is definitely my my preferred platform. Well, and what's the Insta tag? Uh, underscore Travis underscore S. Perfect. Yeah, we'll we'll obviously shout them out too. You can find them through our page. We'll make some posts. Um, we'll also put it in the show notes, uh, which is really great. You know, if you love this episode, you know, definitely blow up his uh, social. Let him know you did. Uh, definitely go show him some love. Uh, anything to add, Kyle? No, just uh, make sure to share it and please take both of us. We're happy to share it and, uh, you know, get you some clout. But honestly, uh, thank you everyone who's made it this far. You're the real one. And especially thank you to Travis for taking the time here. I don't know how long it's been going, probably just over an hour. So, hey, man, we appreciate it. And uh, it was really nice to catch up and hopefully uh, listeners can get a lot of value from, uh, from this episode. For sure. Thanks for having me on, guys. Looking to forward to uh, version or episode two. Absolutely.